everybody. Welcome. Welcome back to Interstage Window, um, our Saturday stream where I have a conversation um, with at least my friend Landon. Say hi, Landon. Hi, Landon. It's your favorite <laughs> and... in omniscient voice in the background. Ooh, so cute. <laughs> and then today, also one of our friends is with us. We have a guest today. So Kendra, how are you doing today? Say hi to everybody. Hi, everybody. It's a Kendra. I've just been informed that because I have a child, I might be a MILF. <laughs> You've just been informed of this? <laughs> I feel like that this has been like part of your like part no. of your branding. No, Is this the Kendra brand. Be, I thought you had to be like 45 plus. No, just nope. a mom. Just okay. a mom. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, your hey. favorite MILF is here. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, hey, Katie. Hey, Bree. Welcome. Welcome to the stream. I'm so glad you guys are here today. And Bree, we can't be your favorite peeps because you're my favorite peep. Okay, I that's how it works. That. Oh, you'd already said that? Oh, you said, no, you're my fave. I see that now. <laughs> yeah, I fight, agree. Fight, Kendra's a fight. MILF. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right, so um, what is, what's our topic today, Landon? What are we talking about today? You always look at me like I'm supposed to know these things. We're talking about, <laughs> to know these things. Uh, we're talking about joining RP groups and the trials and tribulations that come with that. Um, yes. Which is also like, because it's a lot of work and we, we know that it's a lot of work to sit there and be like, oh, we have to join this thing. Gross. Ew, effort. Ew. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody likes Why that. Why can't my perfect group just so, appear in front of yeah. me? Right. Why it should just you manifest. Start? It should manifest via my will alone. Alone. There is no yeah. work involved. And, uh, right. and we're here to tell you how to cut out some of that work or at least ways to get out early. Like ways yes. to sit there and go, oh, this RP is not for me. I'm going to skedaddle. Mm -hmm. All of it and, and everything in between. You... Everything in between. And to tell you that that's okay to skedaddle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But before we do that, I think we should talk about favorite things. Yes. Okay. Who wants to share their favorite thing first? Kendra's the guest. I feel like we should let the MILF go first. Yeah. MILF, what's your I'm favorite thing this week? I'm never down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I want it to be your command, Kendra. When you hit the 10K, I need it to be uh, exclamation point Kendra, and then it just be like the local MILF or something like yes. that. Yes. Hey Lunar. Oh, and welcome to the welcome to the stream. Um, Weird TR. We love uh, Viva Pinata here. We love simulation games here. That's what we're usually playing when we're having our chats. So I'm so glad nice. that you have vivid You're memories of it. Early too. Mm -hmm. And Katie's here. We have so many people here today. We do. Yeah. I'm so happy to see everybody. Uh, the MILF draws them all in. It is. It's actually all Kendra. They're like, oh, Kendra. I'll, I'll take credit for this. Like, myself oh, yeah. while I, uh, <laughs> the sexy voice. It's true. All right, so so Milf, what is your favorite thing this week? My favorite thing this week is I just took my daughter to go visit my parents while I'm doing this at their hotel, and we had to ride up the elevator. And now Eliza is three, so she's been in a pandemic for a third of her life, and has not seen elevators since she was in a stroller. <gasps> Oh, she it's in there. And well, I push the button and she goes, oh, we're going to take the lift. And I looked at her and I was like, no, we're not taking the left one, honey. The right one opened up. Let's get in. She goes, no, the lift. We're on the lift. <gasps> push the button for the lift. And I realized that she has seen way too many Peppa Pig episodes. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> so now my child not only has an accent with daddy. <gasps> and just random words with a longer British A. She calls things lifts. Listen, I feel like you have an opportunity here. <laughs> and I feel like to the what? opportunity is to raise a British child here in America. I knew you were going to say that. That it should happen because I think Eliza wants to Oh my gosh, Lunar, thanks so much for the gift sub, Bri. I hope you enjoy that gift sub there from Lunar. No ads for you. No ads for you. <laughs> oh man. That gift yes. sub changed yes. my life. You should. <laughs> oh, getting the gift sub? <laughs> yes, getting the gift sub was awesome. 
then once you have it, it's like, oh, now I want to resubscribe. I have the same problem because I hang out yeah. in, in so many other streamers and I get the gift sub and then I'm like, oh, and then when the gift sub runs out, it's like, oh, there's ads again. Ew. <laughs> well, it's not even ads for me. I just like being able to have the fun emojis. Oh, really. yeah. <laughs> I'm so all people have some really cool emojis. Yes. I like, yeah, the emojis are, the emojis are the best. <laughs> <laughs> but I've been spending bits, too. I'm like, oh, I really need to get Karen's new emojis. Um, <laughs> I thank you. I very, very much appreciate it. Unlock all the emojis. Oh, Bree's never had an ad. What it must be like to live in Canada. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh, really? That's anyway. so weird. Your region doesn't get ads. Okay, yes, anyway. <laughs> no, I, I just think, like, I just want to track back to your British child here, uh, Kendra, that I uh -huh. really do feel like this is an opportunity that should not be missed. <laughs> she is and... going to be that middle school cumber bunny salad person yes she is yeah. <laughs> and that's her life that's her life you should lean into it now so that she They're knows she has support loo. when it yeah. inevitably happens to her in school and everyone makes fun the of boot. her right so you have to help her the now it's a car right yeah, they're, calling it the they're calling it the loo you could become oh. british in the in your own time as well during all of this but i really yeah, if you want to if you want to that yeah. I, I do think it is in your aesthetic to have a british child it is my aesthetic to have a British child. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that says about me. It just says that it's spot on and I love this for you. Oh, I love man, it for you too. But I'm, I'm all for thank it. You, I'm here. Thank you, Peppa Pig, for Nino on Nino siren sounds and the lift. the lift. We do. We appreciate Peppa Pig in this house. Apparently. Oh, pretty awesome, actually. I love it. What a good favorite thing. What a good favorite thing, Kendra. <laughs> What's your favorite thing this week, Landon? Oh, um, I received an Easter basket this week. And by this week, I mean this morning, even though tomorrow's Easter. That's how we do things. We're pegging in this house. Um, That's right. <laughs> Time is <and> a construct. <laughs> so it's like, uh, it's fine. Um, so I received a basket full of chocolate. And honestly, that's after the last few weeks. Uh, that is what I needed. That's the sort of energy I want to wake to up to on a Saturday morning, is just a offering of chocolate. I love it. <laughs> love <laughs> so that. Home, that's my favorite thing. And we're Karen. also starting. Yeah, we're also starting Easter. Just comment on that. We're also starting Easter today. Levi's cooking a ham, um, and we're oh. gonna have that today and tomorrow uh, because you know a ham is massive. So yes, that sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, that's we're very excited cooking, about it. So you know it's gonna be good. Oh, of course. <laughs> that's awesome um yep. do you have a favorite or Kendra are you doing anything for Easter oh well, I hope I'm moving oh well, that's true <laughs> we hope <laughs> I'm sending good vibes I'm sending good vibes that the move um goes well and everything uh, tomorrow and that works out yeah just, fingers crossed I just didn't want to cut you off in case in case you were having interesting plans but moving is a great plan I mean I have no idea. Time is a construct. <laughs> what is anything? Who knows? I don't know. Now he's working, so it's Jesus. just like, whatever. We love zombie <laughs> Jesus here, but, like, honestly. It's we... whatever. <laughs> I mean, they just I, um... picked a date. It's fine. No, I actually, I was saying this to a friend that I was like, I realized that Easter and the Super Bowl have about the same amount of, like, take up about the same amount of headspace in my in my mind. Um, because yep. I know, hypothetically, both are a Sunday. It One's in February, that's the Super Bowl, and one's in April, March, and that's Easter. And um, other than that, I don't know what it is until I'm being told I have to bring something for something. <laughs> and and with both events, the most important thing is the snacks. So, yeah, yeah. you know, I totally, I totally get it. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And... Um, Oh, so I should, we should probably do my favorite thing next, right? We're good on Easter? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so my favorite thing this week is the Wolves Den, which is a small streamer server that I joined several weeks ago. I've been looking for one for a while. I didn't tell y'all about that because I was doing the hunt on my own and I didn't want to like promote anything that I wasn't 100% sure of. But I finally, about I guess a month ago now, found a um, small streamer server and community that I really vibed with and connected with 
and um, they have actually helped me like a lot, a lot, a lot grow my stream. Like with some of the hype trains that we've had, they started it. Um, you know, they are constantly sharing tips. There's a huge variety of streamers in there that I can go watch at any time. And you know how I do. I like, I like to observe. I like to look. So I watch what they're doing. I'm like, ooh, that's cool. I'm going to copy that. And ooh, that's cool. I'm going to copy that. And ooh, that's cool. I'm going to copy that. And, um, and they're all like so incredibly cooperative and supportive and I just love them a lot. And Landon, if you could please uh, take that link that I posted in the cast members chat and just pop that in the, in the stream chat so that people can join the Wolves Den if they want to. Even if you're not a streamer, you're welcome to join in there if you want because there's just tons of streamers in there and you're bound to find ones that you like even if you're just a viewer or if you're thinking of streaming. In the future, also, they're just a great community to get lots of tips and tricks. So, highly, highly recommend the Wolves Den. A uh, really great place. Yeah, this is Karen's really way. <laughs> Go ahead. This is Karen's me. way of telling me to stream. I feel you it. should. You should. <laughs> I believe in you. Um, someday. someday. Yeah. No, I. I am not. I am not prepared to do that quite yet. Um, someday. But, but someday, who knows? I'll have Speaking to. Of which? Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, it was like I was have. I'd have to get a setup. To see yeah, but you could. Ready. You could someday. Speaking of which, okay. I totally forgot to post in there that I was going live, so I'm actually going to do that right now, so that they know. <laughs> Oops, I was busy chatting with you guys and totally forgot to post in there. But there we go. Oh, thank you so much for the gift sub, Lunar Cucumber. You have you have a gift sub now. It's wonderful. I love that for you. You're should awesome, started, Lunar. Should we get started on our topic? We should, yes. We've wasted enough time talking about lifts and Easter and stuff. <laughs> Although it was very think, entertaining. I don't Nino, think we Nino, the second of wasted time when it came to when it came to uh Tendra's British child. I know. Honestly, I'm I'm here for that. I think it was worth all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Well then I think we should start with finding a group. And I know we've okay. talked about like advertisements and, and going through in that way, but I think what are some tips that we have about finding a group RP, really what to look for, all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, so this is from the perspective of someone looking for groups. So we have an advertising video that's from the perspective of like mods trying to promote their their particular group, but this is from the perspective of somebody looking for a group. So um, Kendra, I know you have some stuff on this. So um, what are some of your tips when you're when you're like browsing for a group? What does that what does that mean to you? And what are you really looking for? OK, get ready. This is my favorite thing to do in my spare time. <laughs> I like to look. Not that I'm joining any. I just think it's fun to look and see. There are I know that we've mentioned RP hubs, um, mm -hmm. just here and there on different things for servers. My experience is primarily for Discord servers. So you go there and you'll see the ads in there, but something that I noticed is that if you go to the big, big, like intimidating numbers, huge, make large general advertising servers, they usually have a role play group section in there under writing or whatever. And there are so many ads for groups that are not in the big hub servers or on Discord. Yep. But it just opens up more options, which is what you want, typically. Um, I mean, it's what I want. I always want options. So definitely look in places that you don't expect to see ads. Mm -hmm. Where you don't think that's where you go. Because you might find some just wild gem. The roleplay community is very uh, dispersed and in hidden secret places is what I'm hearing. Yes. yes. Uh, so look far and wide. <laughs> like the hubs are great. I love the hubs. But not everybody knows about the hubs. Somehow. And some people just don't want to have their server partnered with a lot of different places. So they do individual ads in these big groups mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i've seen that too so like there's just to give some context for those that aren't super aware 
the Discord roleplay community, there's several like large-ish hub servers, which are places for you to advertise your roleplay groups and one-on-ones and things like that. And they'll have like, you know, maybe 500 to a couple of thousand members. And they're great places to find roleplay groups. But there's tons of role players and roleplay groups that don't advertise on the roleplay specific hubs. They'll just advertise on what's called advertising servers, which are available to advertise all freaking kinds of things like those advertising servers will have sections for youtube and twitch channels right they'll have sections for different kinds of hangout discord servers they'll have sections for subreddits they, i mean everything everything and they'll typically homework have a help. role play yeah yeah homework help is in some of these like but they'll typically have a section for role play too and you'll see ads there that you won't see in any of the the big role play hubs They'll just, because those people that just don't, they're, they're doing roleplay service, but they're not part of the Discord roleplay community. And you can find a lot of cool stuff there that otherwise you would never see. So yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, which is really cool and really helpful that it is that they do exist in those spots. Yeah, just cast your net very far and wide, which brings me to tip number two when finding a roleplay group. When you're looking, you have a specific thing in mind that you're looking for, right? You say, I want this thing, and I want it to be like this and this and this, and I am so sorry to tell you that does not exist unless you make it. <laughs> mm. So you're saying don't be, too, don't be too picky when you're reading these ads for different groups. Yes, if it does not tick all of your boxes right away, that's okay because nothing is going to tick all of your boxes unless you make it. Yeah, and well, and like an ad in itself is so, the purpose of it is to be eye-catching and vague and quick to get people yes. in. So you don't even know what boxes it's really ticking because what, what we're advertising to is the general public rather than the individual person. Mm -hmm. um, so until you come and take a look at it, if it has like four out of five of the boxes checked, come on in. See see what's up. Mm -hmm. um, because there's a chance that there's something in there that's going to take that fifth box. Yeah, for sure. And I think, I, I mean, that's been my experience too. The ad is always just going for like what they think, what the mods think is the most important parts of the role play. It never fully describes the whole role play. You have to join to really know what's going on there. Um, and before I forget, thank you for the hydrate, Lunar. I did take that. I just didn't want to interrupt Kendra, but I did take the hydrate. And I will also get your cupcake fixed up inside of the um, the Discord server after the stream. So don't worry, I won't forget that. I've got it in the queue. Um, but I, yes, absolutely. I'm like, what is the cupcake? I'm so excited to see what that, that turns into. It's a roll. Okay, so the, the original version of the cupcake, the Lunar's in all the streams, so she just probably has a ton of points and is trying to spend them. But the cupcake, the original vision for the cupcake is I wanted a way for people to get to the top of the, the list of people inside of the cafe without necessarily having to be active in the cafe or purchase um a patreon subscription or subscribe to twitch so because you know the the patrons um and twitch subscribers are at the top and then it's the people that are most active after that and so then basically what i have is the cupcake and the cupcake shoots you at the top of the activity list nice uh that makes sense yeah because <laughs> if you're active in the twitch chat i feel like you know that should there should be a reward for that so that's what that's about I'm glad Karen is just trying to make all, all of our dreams. dreams. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I'm trying to make your dreams come true. Sorry, I couldn't hear what you were saying, Landon. What was that? Oh, uh, just that Brie had commented that Freya ticked all of her boxes. It's like, that's Aww, good. That's um, awesome. You. But if you look at our ad, our ad is pretty, like, <laughs> it's sci-fi future, um, <laughs> literate role play, <laughs> and that's basically it, and some cool graphics a little yeah. bit more than that but not well, it, not much else no not much else because discord only has that character limit right so yep. if you want to see our plot you have to click a link right you can click a link to see the pinterest that's on on the ad and i think the spotify playlist is on the ad as well but when you're just like bare looking at the ad you get kind of a vibe for what it is but you really don't mm -hmm. like you don't really know i mean you don't really know yeah and it helps to have a list in your head you don't have to write it out but just knowing and I know that you've said it before on different streams and in different videos where knowing yourself is going to be key to your success. 
mm -hmm. here. Yes. Because we will we will definitely get into that too. Even if mm -hmm. something looks really cool, if there is like an activity limit that you know you won't be able to meet, don't don't worry about it. It's okay. That says nothing about you as a person. That just means that group is not for you. Yep. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly. okay. Yep. Like I used to see groups on Tumblr that would um that would have like three day activity an activity check every three days, and it's like, oh, yeah. oh, that is not yep. going to happen, my friend. <laughs> um, yeah. And so you know, I'm just gonna not There's join, no even if their plot looks super cool. It does not matter because I just I know I can't do that. Yeah. And it can be an awesome group, and it's an awesome group for people who can do that activity and who want that type of activity. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. probably a great group for them. It is not the right fit for me, and I am not the right fit for them. And that's yep. okay. Yep. But what's wonderful about roleplay, um, that I think I also want to say in this section, is even when it comes to groups, there is just a plethora of groups out there. Like, thousands upon thousands upon thousands and i'm not like exaggerating at all so no matter what the fact is if you keep looking you will find a group that's going to fit as much of what you need it to fit for you to be happy now no group's going to be perfect unless you make it yourself right but there are going to be groups out there that tick enough of your boxes that you're going to be happy if you look lo look long and hard enough I mean, yeah, that's how I ended up here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and there's, I mean, that's the other thing, too, is that, like, there literally is a new one every single day. Yeah, there there's is. A, there's a new group happening, or several, every single day. Um, and with new people or new dynamics of, like, same people, but, like, maybe there's a person added or a person has left. And that, that changes a group dynamic entirely. Like, you will not run out of groups as long as you're willing to bend a little and, and be interested in more than just one specific thing mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep um and i think i think it's important to try to think about like what is truly important to you and what i mean by that is i see some role players out there that are like i only ever want to role play high school role plays period end of story and they'll limit themselves by genre or 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 style or things like that which at the end of the day like that really doesn't matter that much. What matters is things like, do you vibe with the rules? Do you think the mods are cool? You know, do you think that the um, community is as creative as you want it to be, et cetera, et cetera. So like, when you're thinking of what a good role play is for you, that's what I would encourage you to think about. Don't spend too much time thinking about like, what exact genre and plot that you're looking for. Because at the end of the day, like, you really don't care about that. Like, I know you think you do, but you really don't. That's not what's actually important and what's going to make you feel like you're having fun. You're just calling me out left, right, and center in this episode. It's true, though. It's true, though. <laughs> you know it's true, and you know it's true. Genre is, like, so not important in the grand scheme of things. It really isn't. It isn't. I'm oh. just going to take this moment to say sci-fi is not something I... You 100 wand, wand bits on the, on the slot machine. What am I super interested in right now? Freya. What is Freya? Sci-fi. <laughs> oh, thank you so but much for it... the biddies, Jed. You're the best, Jed. <laughs> but is it sci-fi? Is it really? They're on a spaceship. Hey! But, like, how much of that really affects the plot? I think it's romance, personally. But that's my <laughs> opinion. That's... Well... You make enough romance covers that are spin-offs of Freya that it is a <laughs> romance book in itself for that reason. I'm just... I, I play the NPC, Oscar Elon, who runs the ship, and he will write you very specific romance novels. <laughs> fine. <laughs> it's canon, and it's fine. That's Kendra's contribution to that NPC, and we absolutely love it. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so genre genre does not matter yeah um um oh, go but ahead, I think that, like, no i was just gonna say but i think that's something that's really important that is, is attached to all of this is making sure you are reading the ad yeah like yes. yes genre is flexible and and sometimes you know not always the most accurate but 
don't just sit there and be like, oh, it's a pretty graphic with this thing and not know what you're getting into. Um, read the ad. See what they're looking for. See what if it aligns with what you want because it will be so much more work to introduce yourself and get excited, especially if you're the per kind of person who like introduce yourself before you start reading anything. Um, to then just be like, oh, actually, this is nothing that I want. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, it's the same thing as like if you're browsing dating profiles and you're just swiping based off of the picture. Like, that's real dumb. You're going to get connected with people that you do not like, <laughs> you know? Um, so don't base a role play just off of the very first impression of like skimming the ad actually read the content of the ad because that's going to tell you what the moderators of that role play value and think is important and that's going to be really important to helping you make a decision on if this particular role play is something that you that you would potentially enjoy and you should spend more time reading about exactly and yeah. that we really you do need to like also take the ads at face value um Yes, that there is something deeper, but also, like, if they're, I don't know, if it's, like, sitting there and going mature content, don't expect things to not be behind an age wall or yeah, things yeah. like that, too. Like, you do, there are certain things on ads that you really do have to make sure you're reading and taking at face value. Like, if it um, says mature content and you're 14, like, maybe don't click on that ad. Yeah. I know that or, sounds really silly, but Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like OC, if it was like OC's not welcome, I'm not sure if a lot of people put that, but OC's, or OC's welcome, well, people, no. People no used to do that in Tumblr. Yeah. yeah. Um, don't think that they're going to make an exception for you. They won't. <laughs> yeah, they put it on the ad. They clearly think that's important, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I think it is, it's really, it's really important to remember all of that. Um. Mm -hmm. And yes, there are things that it's like, okay, you're not going to get all of the information from an ad, but the ad is a preview into what you're going to do. And if you vibe with an ad enough that you're like, okay, well, this could be interesting. Check it out. Yeah. Otherwise, you can move on. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's fine. It's okay. It's, it's I... fine. <laughs> A lot of my advice is coming from my recent deep dive into a, a fandom search that was just the Wild West. I have never seen anything like when I joined hundreds of these servers, just looking. None of them fit what I wanted, and that's okay. But I've never seen anything like what I saw in those servers. Oh gosh, <laughs> we're um, we're gonna we're gonna make the we're gonna not name the fandom just uh, for not no, shame. Is that no? Nope. We're not gonna name it. Okay, no name. We're not nope. naming the fandom. Um, long time viewers can probably guess, but so if you if you yeah. know, like, don't put it in the chat, please. Uh, just to kind of save Kendra a little bit. <laughs> oh, like I don't mind. Come for me all you want. I just it was wild. I joined so many of these servers that they all have blended into one. I can't tell you the specifics of anyone. This was, oh, September last year. So like, I don't, you think I remember yeah. names that long? I don't. <laughs> um, but the point is you didn't like a single one and it was awful for you. I didn't like you. a single one and, yeah. and it was okay. It, it wasn't, well, there was one part awful for me, but that was because a mod followed me after I left the server. Oh, oh no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, oh, please don't. That's, that's not chill. Please don't. Please, it's okay. Please stop. Don't chase me. Don't chase me, please. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, your server is not going to be it for everybody, and that's okay. Yeah. But it's We have whole episodes important. where we talk about that, too. Yeah. It's important as a player to know that not everything's going to be for you, and that's okay. You don't... I know that we're going to get into the sunken cost fallacy thing. Yeah. But and that was very big in this particular fandom. Oh gosh. <laughs> and I'm just like, it's okay. If if it's not gonna work, it's okay. Move on. There's like thousands. Yep, thousands it's and okay. thousands and thousands. Yeah. yeah it... That's that's my general advice. It's just have a wide and broad net and be willing to look at things that aren't one hundred percent what you think you want. Mm -hmm. I think that's some, some good advice. 
Yep. Um, yes. all right, so should we move on to, if you did find an RP, if you did find a group that you're like, I could vibe with this, yeah. how do you, how do you, what are the things you should do before you necessarily introduce yourself? Yeah, so just to kind of contextualize that a little, um, if we, if we pretend like we're telling a, telling a little story here, um, so you've, you've searched and you've searched and you've searched for a role play, you've joined a whole bunch of role plays, you've left a whole bunch of role plays, you finally find one that you're like, huh. I think this might actually work out and you you've joined and you're brand brand new so that's kind of that's kind of the um the picture that we're trying to paint here so yeah kendra if you want to go first what do you do before read you actually rules. introduce yourself yes read the rules that's the first thing <laughs> that was yes. the first thing I on my list. <laughs> read the rules uh Just... yeah nope go ahead i i can't tell you how many times i've dipped after reading the rules mm -hmm. and only the rules Yep. The, just the because rules... okay go ahead like the rules will show you what the community values as a whole mm -hmm. and if those values do not line up with yours dip just dip that's fine those rules are there if it's not the club for you it's not the club for you yeah exactly it's <laughs> it, at the very least <laughs> If it's not what the if it's not what the community finds important, it's what the mods value, right? It's what yes. the mods find important, and they kind of then rule the community because they are the rule makers. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's and it also sets the tone for the RP. Is it a rule heavy RP? Is it a rule light RP? Um, is a lot of things like not are, are things some things unspoken rules like those kind of can be written in in there as well um and you can find that all out by reading the rules yep i know when you i can... um back in the day when i used to actually join role plays and i really i don't do it anymore because i don't have time for it but when i used to join other people's role plays i know if the rules <laughs> were like ridiculously super long and took like you know more than about i don't know 10 minutes or 20 minutes to read um and even that feels like kind of long but anyways if they took me way too long to read then i would just leave because i was just like yeah. if you feel the need to codify this much stuff for your community to run smoothly i know i cannot possibly vibe with that like it's just it's not for me i've just had so many experiences with with places that had tons and tons of rules that i just already know that if you feel the need to codify every little thing i'm never going to work out no matter how hard i try <laughs> it's just i can't your, do it <laughs> your control issues will not mesh well with my control issues and therefore right. i need to go <laughs> yeah it's just it's not going to be a good time for anybody so like just in it, the rules themselves don't have to be anything I disagree with, but if they're just that long, then I just know, like, okay, I'm I'm a very experienced role player. I've been doing this for a long time. I really don't need six different rules about don't be a jerk. You know, one yeah. don't be a jerk and don't god mod rule should be plenty. If there's more than that, this is not the place for me. You know, <laughs> yeah. you have either had a jerk problem or they're jerk happy. Helping. Um, <laughs> It, my favorite are when you join things and you see a rule that is so wild that you know there's a story there. Yes. And, and you're not sure if you want to know that story or not. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. And I and this yep. is just like my ethos. Like, I don't make rules for one person. You know, if we have one person every once in a blue moon have this particular issue, then the rules isn't that they're, I'm not going to write a rule for that. You know, I'll just handle it with those individuals as they pop up. So if I see like a role play that runs that way, I just know that it's just not going to match me. You know, it's just not going to match the way that I like things run, which is very yep. rules light. Now, other people are going to feel different ways. They're going to feel like, you know, I want lots of rules because it makes me feel safe and secure and know exactly what's expected of me. So it just really, really depends on what you're looking for. But those, but the way that the rules are written can give you tons of clues about what the mods value, what the community values, and what's expected of different players. Yeah, for, for me, one of the big, the big, not necessarily red flags, but the, one of the things that I know it won't work out for me is if people, if, if the RP's rules are not community, like, focused as far as trying to get community members to get along and work things out for themselves mm. if it's very much like mods control this mods control that mods control this um 
whereas like for me i like the i like the idea of like sitting there and being like talk it out or don't be involved <laughs> uh instead of being like the mods the mods are the rulers of everything yep um because yeah. i don't want to know i'm an adult i live on my i live my own life which means i don't need to go to a stranger on the internet unless it's a big issue nope. um and i expect other people to be able to handle themselves too I would agree with that. If that's not the expectation, yep. then I'm not going to fit in in a place like that because I'm just going to handle it on my own. The likelihood that I'm going to go to the mods if I have a problem with somebody as opposed to going to that person is pretty low. I'm just going to go to the person I'm having a problem with and talk to them, you know? <laughs> so if yep. that's not encouraged, then it's not going to work out. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, so that sure. is the, the very, 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 very first thing you should do. <laughs> yes. And, uh, and Please. you could, and from there you should make a decision. Like it shouldn't be like, oh, I'm gonna read rules and read everything else. Like, you get to the end of the rules, you gotta go. If you haven't dipped yet, you gotta ask yourself, am I gonna dip or am I gonna read what's next? Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Naomi has a good you're comment not here. Vibe. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Kendra. No, I want to hear Naomi's comment. Um, she says, if they're too long, I'm probably not going to remember them. And then I don't want to fear breaking a rule because it was too extensive. Yeah, pretty that much. Yeah. Oh, that was Brie. Okay. <laughs> the names are like dark blue on my like chat reader for some reason. That's the that's oh, the uh, the color that OBS picked today. And like, I cannot read the names. So I'm like kind of half guessing. So I'm very sorry. That was Brie's comment, but that was a good one. But yeah, I totally agree. Um... Because, like, the truth is, you can write as many rules as you want, and this is just me being, like, a stubborn bitch, and I'm sorry, but it's just true. I'm not going to change my behavior. I'm going to be who I am and how I am. And so, you know, that is what it is, and that means that there's places I'm not going to fit in, but, you know, that's 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 what that is. That is, what that is. At the end of the day, yeah. these are, like, little writing clubs. Mm -hmm. It's not a big society thing. It's a little writing club. And yep. not all clubs are going to fit all needs yep yeah i mean there are some people who who run a club where you're not allowed to talk about anything else but the rp um yeah that doesn't and, apply for me because part of what i want in a writing club is to connect with people on a deeper level than what i'm writing with them mm -hmm. i don't think i could ever get comfortable with people if i don't have some sort of out of RP or even just like out of character chatter about the RP in general. Mm hmm. Yeah, I agree. But, but some, but some players I, have had like so much, personal. so much. Yeah, but some players, yeah, and some, because some players have had like so much out of character conflict, they're just like, I just want to write. I don't want to make friends. I feel like that's where the problems come in. And so they would institute rules like that, right? So well, if that's, if that's, that's you and you see that kind of rule, then you know that maybe that's the place for you. Um, it just yeah. really depends. But you have to know yourself. Like, that's the whole thing with the rules, with, with the advice of reading the rules, is you have to know what it is that's actually important to you and what's going to be deal breakers for you. If you don't know that, then no amount of reading the rules is going to really help. you got to kind yes. of figure that out a little bit, too. And I know that takes some trial and error and joining lots of different places, but that's a critical part to this, is, is just is lots of experience. Yeah, lots and... of experience. Oh, go ahead, Kendra. No, I was just going to say that, like, if after you read the rules when you're deciding dip or not to dip it doesn't matter what else how, like how cool all the other required reading is how cool all of the characters are if you're not going to vibe with the rules nothing else is going to work out yep yeah and you just have to trust your gut to know whether you like it or not if you're gonna like it or not like, if you're going to fit in, you'll know by the time you read the rules, you'll know. Yes. You should, yeah. You should have a basic yeah. idea when you read the rules. And if you don't, then either more self-discovery needs to happen and maybe you need to practice and, and play around with that more. Or, alternatively, um, maybe their rules are just unclear and, and that's a reason that you might not want to stay in that place. Yeah. And Katie, Katie made a point, too, that she has been in a in a dynamic where people don't talk outside of chat or outside of character except yeah. to ask like consent um and i just wanted to bring that back again that that's totally valid like there's nothing wrong with that it just 
for me yeah you don't want that and that's that'll mm-hmm. be in the rules like you'll read that and you'll sit there and be like oh is that something that I really want is that going to be nice or is it going to be like no actually I'm having a hard day and I don't want to talk about Freya <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe um I mean there's definitely people that were great writing partners and then we got to know each other and then it was like oh never mind I don't really like them and I wish I had never gotten to know them I mean I've had that experience before so um I can kind of understand why you might have had experiences where you feel that way Katie because I know I've, there's been occasions where I regretted getting to know my roleplay partner <laughs> yeah uh-huh. so <laughs> Yeah, and I, I think that's that's also I can see that working more one on one as far as like having no contact, um, mm-hmm. because it's like I, I, you're actually just serving a purpose. <laughs> that's just to write fantasy with me. Um, but for like as far as group goes, I do find that in order to be a group, you need to be able to talk to each other and depend on each other, and that's at least how I strive to run our RPs at least. Mm-hmm. And that's what works best for me too. So that's yeah. what I tend to look for. Um, so after you've read the rules and you sit there and you go, I actually really vibe with these. This is this is looking to be good. I, I don't mind any of these rules. I, I totally didn't agree with all of them. This is what I'm looking for. What's the next thing you do? You read the read lore. The- <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's when you start investing time. Um, yeah. I think that it's very important to not invest your time any time before this. Yeah. Uh, because you don't, if you're not, you don't want to read, you know, 20, 30 minutes, 10 minutes even worth of reading to then find out that you're like, oh, no one's allowed to talk each other to each other except in the third person, um, which is a weird rule in this hypothetical uh, that I've just made <laughs> this, up. <laughs> this role play, yeah, this role play that doesn't exist except in Landon's brain, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kendra You're actually says. required to only refer to yourself in the third person and constantly tag each other. Um, so <laughs> that's part of the rules. And if I had already just read this 30 minutes worth of lore before before I had gotten to that rule, then I just wasted 30 minutes. <laughs> well, the worst and, case scenario there is that you fall in love with the lore and you decide that you're going to try to fit your circle block into the weird star-shaped yeah. hole. Yeah. that is this group yeah that you're like oh well maybe maybe being tagged every three minutes won't be that bad it's that bad guys <laughs> yes <laughs> it always is i promise it always is Tis yeah because it, because again the genre is not the most important thing they're the rules and how those are laid out are far more important to what's actually going to you know keep you satisfied Yep. Thank you, Woof. This is a nice advanced garden. We are actually almost done with this game, um, funny enough. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's why you don't, like, don't read any of the lore or get invested in any of that until you have read the ad and read the rules because you don't want to fall in love with it and then it turns out that you can't stay there. Like, that's the that's the worst. It feels awful when that happens, when you're like, gosh, I was so excited and I was having all these ideas and now I find out that this is a first person RP and I just cannot vibe with that. Oh no. Oh god, yeah. That's yeah. Actually, I probably should have used that because that's way more realistic and way more heartbreaking. Um, <laughs> yeah, because um, I don't write that way and, and no shame to, to those that uh, that do, but I just can't do it. It's like, it's too much for me. I can't do first yeah. person. I know it's really popular in YA right now and so there's a lot of role plays that do first person, but not me. <laughs> So, the trouble that I yeah, found was I... Tupper. Tupper? I found out oh. that I just could not vibe with role plays that required the use of Tupper. Oh, which... yeah. I've seen Tupper. It looks so weird to me, but I've never actually tried to Tupper. use it. I I tried. I gave it the good old college try in a couple groups, and it did not work. Wait, 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 wait. I could not make it thing? happen. What is this magical thing? Tupper? Tupper, Tupper yeah. Box is a Discord bot where you can change your the like icon and username in your oh. posts by doing a special command so people will have it be like you have to use your your character's icon and name for that post okay and I don't think go I to another character. I mean, aesthetically i could understand why that would be cool because like we've started using character names as tags but yeah. i hate the idea of it being a rule 
<laughs> well, so this is the way, this is what makes Tupper so annoying. Like what, what Kendra's just described is kind of the benefits of it. And thank you so uh, much for the yes. follow, Wolf. Happy to have you here. Um, but what's annoying about it is because you don't make any of your posts. The bot makes your posts for you. You cannot go back and edit them. Um, and, and it's very difficult if you want to ever get rid of anything or change anything later. So basically, like, if you make a mistake, you have to, like, delete and completely redo your entire post. And it's just a pain in the butt. And plus, Tumper, Tupper works across servers. So you'll be able to see, like, characters that people are playing in other servers that also use Tupper. And so it just, it makes this weird amalgamation. So you'll, like, you'll, like, end up seeing that pe some people have, like, you know, the Tupper for whatever your server you're, that you're in with them. And then they'll also have a Tupper for like, I don't know, some um, ERP porn server that they're in. And it's like, oh, cool, that's that's there. <laughs> and so it's very awkward and I don't like it. Obviously, I'm a Tupper hater. Sorry, guys that love Tupper. It's not for me. <laughs> the groups that I joined with Tupper had a lot of issues with character bleed and the idea of the writing style is how I write and how I prefer to be written with is to have it clear, you know, like who you're writing with in the prose. Oh, I see what you're like, saying. Yeah. Because you don't have you know, that with Jack Tupper. Does it? No, no. And Tupper is used a lot of times with first person things mm -hmm. I've found. And I, I don't vibe with that. It's not for me. It's yep. great for the people who like that style and who want all of that. Not not the not the bot for me. But to have it be a rule, to have it be codified as this is the way it is, I can say, okay, bye. Yeah. I hope you guys have a lot of fun. This is really cool. Uh it's not for me. Mm -hmm. And that's Okay. Yeah, I mean, we've had similar feedback in our role play about rules like like that. Not Tupper, we don't use Tupper. But at the end of every post, you're supposed to at whoever's supposed to reply next, right? So like if my character mm -hmm. and Kendra's character are having a thread together, then I would like at Kendra or at Kendra's character at the bottom of that post. And we've had people come into our role plays that's like, can people reply to me without adding? And it's like, no, no, everyone does that here. <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's whatever, it's what you, what you want to tolerate um, as far as the platform goes that you're, that you're on. And different platforms are all going to have different quirks like that. Yeah. And you just, you'll need to figure out what works best for you and what your deal breakers are. Because I also yeah. think that that's something that maybe we didn't talk much about in rules as far as the difference between like something that you're going to find annoying and do have to adjust to versus something that is genuinely a deal breaker. Yeah. Um, like, is it causing you anxiety to be added? Then you probably shouldn't join a group that asks people at the end of replies. Yes. Or is it something that you'll just find annoying, but then sit there and go, okay, I will either figure out how to change my notifications or just open it up and then ignore it? Cool. Um, yeah. And there is like that difference between that hard line of this is a no go and no this this is something that okay this is just a new rp not any no rp is going to be perfect i'm here for it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yep because remember it's only going to have everything you want if you make it yourself <laughs> and that's still true that's still true that but is yeah, true. After... and then you discover that people don't necessarily want what you've made <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah and then you'll have yeah. like the opposite problem yeah. <laughs> but yeah i think that before you even introduce yourself you have to read the rules and you have to read the lore and i feel like if you've gotten that far and you're like okay i'm still into this that's when you should probably start engaging and introducing yourself and talking with everybody and asking questions and things of that nature like in an ideal world now if they have lots and lots of lore i think it's appropriate sometimes to stop in the middle of that and ask a few questions or say hi or whatever but um but in general i think the order of operations should be check out the ad decide if you want to join check out the rules decide if you want to stay check out the lore decide if you think that this is going to get your creative juices flowing or not and go from there. Yeah. Exactly. So once you've decided you're staying... <laughs> well, that's... 
<laughs> that <laughs> when, uh... <laughs> in our advice so far, uh, there has been like notice that there's been no make yourself known in the chat and do your introductions and, and all of this. Like we we really or at least I am really pushing this, like don't talk <laughs> before you find out whether you want to stay or not. Um don't invest any more of yourself in it if you don't want to stay. Um until and, you've And made this is based and this is based off of experiences that we have had and mistakes that we've made and mistakes that we've watched other people make. Yes. As well. And also yep. because we are all very busy adults whose time is precious is just the truth. So if you're a younger person who has, you know, hours upon hours upon hours a day, then maybe you can do these slightly out of order. But if you're, you know, in your thirties, like we are, and <laughs> work full time jobs and things like that, then uh, then time is precious. Person has hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And I'm also gonna. I'm I don't know, gonna but I see them. Note. I'm also gonna make a vote in there and go. I am. I'm also not sitting there and like trying to save time. I'm also trying to sit there and and save you from being feeling like you are more emotionally engaged yes. or owing yes. something to people because you've started be making friends or you started liking the people that you've talked to even though it's been 30 seconds like but sometimes it happens I'm also that trying fast to, trying to sit there and say yeah. don't make emotional connections until you've decided to stay because you, our human brain will try to sit there and be like oh the emotional connections are enough to stay even though we've yep. literally just met these people and know nothing yeah yeah, absolutely. <laughs> That's very, very true. Um, especially if you're without a group, especially if you're a writer who like just really wants to get started um, and doesn't and doesn't have any other writing going on. Like that sort of desperation of I need to find a group and the perfect group is going to take over and sit there. And, and if you introduce yourself and get emotionally invested, it's going to be 10 times harder to just sit there and be like, this is not the group for me. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yep. So yes. that's for that's for yeah. all us old people and also the young people. Yes. So, so I have a, a statement to make on this. Um, you know, even a broke clock is right twice a day, right? And there is one <laughs> thing, there is one thing that 4chan was right about. We all oh. need to lurk more. All of us, <laughs> myself included. We open our mouths way too fast online nowadays before we understand the culture that we're stepping into and each new internet space is its own culture just like going to a foreign country or a new town or city or anything like that and so the one one thing that 4chan was right about amongst all the other uh awful things on that website is we all need to lurk more and when you first join a role play after you've decided that yes this is cool and i'm gonna stay that's our first tip that i think we want to talk about is lurk more like spend time observing uh more than you spend time engaging at first because that's going to set you up for success to have those positive awesome connections with people um now i'm not saying like don't talk at all right like because that's not really the same thing because then you're not engaging at all and you're not giving other people an opportunity to get to know you but what i'm saying is when you're brand new there can be an anxiety response of needing to dominate the conversation and I've just never yeah. seen that go well. I just have never seen never. that go well because you don't know yet. You don't know yet. So of course it's not going to go well. Well, like, yeah. And it's, it's exciting to, okay. So there's like multi steps here, right? Is that yes, you want to meet people. Yes. You want to be a part of the conversation and yes, our anxiety is making us dominate the conversation. Um, but also recognizing that a lot of RPs, at least in my experience, especially on Discord, have like a member wall so that you aren't yes. actually engaging in the real conversation that's going on. Um, you are seeing part of how people interact. Like, it, do, do most members greet you? Do most members willingly have a conversation? Are, is there a conversation going on in the lobby that you're in? But you're not seeing the depth of everything else that is happening. That could be that, like, most of my experience is with Karen's RP or have been RPs that have heavily been based off of Karen's RPs <laughs> and rules. Um, <laughs> so I recognize my biases in that. But that is part of, like, you're not necessarily engaging with how it normally would be engaged. It is, you are more spotlighted because of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, whether yeah, you, whether you know it or not, you are. 
<laughs> yeah, and and just to give a little a little bit more on that for anybody that might not be understanding fully what Land is talking about. So my role plays and a lot of role plays on Discord do this too. Is they'll have like a, a lobby chat, which is the ch general chat that when you first join you can get into, and then once you actually join the role play, there's this totally other separate general chat that's for like members that have fully joined. So there'll be basically two general chats, and you won't see the real one at first. Now, not, not all of them operate this way. Some, as soon as you join the server, you see everything there is to see. But that's how I run mine, and I'm, I know I'm not alone in that because I've seen other people's servers set up that way too. Yeah, the culture shock of going to a server that you can see everything as soon as you join was wild. <laughs> you were too used to our ways. <laughs> I was way too... I was way too used to that and i liked that because i came from tumblr mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. uh-huh mm -hmm. but yep <laughs> you know and and that was fine that you know that's how the group works that's great it's a different community and they're going to have different standards yep and we yeah. did come from Tumblr role plays, all of us. And we have an episode on um, my YouTube channel where we talk about our Tumblr role play experience and a lot of like the things that we do differently than maybe other Discord servers do or why we do a lot of the things really does link back to the way the Tumblr, Tumblr role play community was. Um, we are still haunted by it. <laughs> yeah, was at the time of the Exodus. Yeah. <sighs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. We were yep. there for the great for the great porn banning of Tumblr. <laughs> I mean, even before that, the great mm -hmm. role play, and then we left. Yep. Then we said bye. bye. Peace. See you never. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. But but you know that's our quirk, right? But every role play group yeah. is going to have some kind of history, some kind of reason they do what they do some kind of like stuff that doesn't make sense to you when you first join but if you lurk you will easily be able to figure that out and and you can always like ask specific questions you know observe the conversation that's going on things like that and and then you'll be able to see like what it's like and you can avoid all of those like open mouth insert foot moments that happen when you're brand new and don't understand the culture that you're suddenly taking part in right Mm. Yeah. And all of the lurk more stuff is very important, does not apply to questions. Like, as, yeah. ask a question. That's great. Please ask questions if you don't understand something. Well, or if you want a reason. But, yeah, I mean, you I need also to be able to. On the RP. <laughs> well, I mean, you need to be able to receive the answer and go, okay. And then make up your mind on how you feel about that answer in private mm -hmm. yes mm -hmm. yeah and how we'll, you we'll feel get... about that answer is on you <laughs> yeah and i, and I want to get to some of that a little a little bit later um for sure about like what that means when you start engaging in those conversations um but but uh yes basically i do want to <laughs> i do want to say that yes absolutely ask questions in rps that welcome those there are times when if it's in the rules and you are asking questions without having read the rules and i know in our hypothetical you have but if you are asking questions without reading the rules that is a way to piss somebody off because yeah, your it can be. might yeah. be in the rules it might be that because the rules are so or the lore it might be that the rules are so like written like if it's rule heavy or whatever or lore heavy um, and you've decided to skip and you want the Spark Notes version, asking those questions without having any of that backup will hurt your reputation as far as how people are looking at you. Yes, and Which we've is why experienced. If you are asking questions, try to find the answer on your own first. Yeah, and we've experienced both. Like, we've experienced people yeah. that were asking questions that were clearly thoughtful and based on stuff they read. And and I can't Love speak for that. other role plays. Yeah, I can't speak for other role plays, but I, I always really appreciate that. You know, I think that's awesome because it shows that they're engaged and they're really thinking about what they're reading and that sort of thing. But we've also had people ask questions that were like, my friend, did you, like, just read the channel categories and stop there? Um, <laughs> you know, and that can get frustrating yeah. because the thing is, like, we typed those rules. There is no difference between me typing the stuff again to you versus you going and reading what was typed 
previously. And so that can be very frustrating. Um, so just make sure that if you are asking questions that you've made at least some kind of attempt to get those answers uh, from what they have already provided you in whatever documentation it is you're supposed to read before you join anyway. Because every role play has some some of that stuff, you know, more or less depending on the role play. But every role play has some of it at least. Yes, exactly. Please, please read the rules first thing, <laughs> please. Yeah, I mean, there is there is absolutely, as a mod or someone who worked really, really hard on the lore, there is absolutely nothing more soul-crushing than having a new person come in uh, say that they read the lore in five minutes and then continue to ask you about the lore that they would have found the answer for if they had actually read the lore. Uh-huh. It's yeah. really frustrating. Um, yeah. <laughs> no, it, it would have, it like just, it's soul crushing. And it's like sitting there and being like, okay, you're, you're not interested. Like, you're not interested. We can tell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and and I know they think they are, and I know they think they are, so it's very, it's probably very hard to hear that if, if you feel like we're talking to you right now, but you're not really. I know you think you yeah. are, but you're not, because you didn't invest the time and the effort, because it's all reading, it's all text, so it is no different to go read what was already written versus make us type it to you again. It's no well, different. Yeah, well, you're also, like, demanding our emotional time and energy to something that we already did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> um we we already answered all these questions yeah <laughs> i'm so sorry that uh that you felt <laughs> that it wasn't good enough but it was <laughs> yeah so that's um, why like that's why like when somebody's asking questions that are like clearly built off of what they read it's like oh yes because then i feel engaged right but then yes. it can look it can look the same to an outsider but it's not and when someone's asking questions yeah. where it's clear they didn't read you it can have like the complete opposite emotional reaction and from an outsider this looks like you know this one person's getting praise for asking questions and the other person's getting punished for asking questions but it really is different and we can tell you know i wish we couldn't tell <laughs> i know right <laughs> I would love to live in that ignorant bubble of happiness. Well, we Me too. Tell. Me too. We can tell, though. We can, we can tell. Yeah. Yep. Um, which is like, yeah, it's just hard. Yeah. It is hard. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but to to move to something else. Um, so so say you've done all of this right, and you've you've lurked. And, um, and you're still feeling like really good about this role play and you're like, yes, 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 I'm loving what I'm reading. I think this is really cool. I think these people are cool, et cetera, et cetera. Um, what, sh what should the new person do next? Like, what's the next step? Um, that is a great question. I think the next step is to work on your app. Yep. Um, and I'm, and I'm not saying that there is a time frame that you, that is like polite between you entering a server and when you have to have your app in. It is not a rush. If you want to take days, if you want to take weeks, you can. But I also think that that leaves an impression if you enter a space and are more interested in the community aspects than the community writing, when the purpose of the community is community writing, it says something. I think um, it does and, a little bit too, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah. and it, it's really discouraging and it makes people, It. I mean, here's the thing. All of this is, you, we are just trying to, like, basically tell you how to make a good first impression. And not being interested in the thing that you're supposed to be interested about when you enter the club is not making a good first impression. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the person that shows up to book club that didn't read the book and yet insists on being part of the conversation. You know, it's yes. kind of like somebody like, yeah. um, you're, I'm, I'm going to go to this knitting club, but I refuse to invest in any of the knitting materials or actually bring any of my knitting stuff with me, um, you know, or whatever it is people do in knitting clubs. I have no idea. I'm just making it up. <laughs> but, I, um, but it's kind of, knit. I mean, I assume they knit too, right? But it's kind of like <laughs> that because, because role plays really are private little clubs. It's, it's just like that. It's like showing up to book club every week, having not read the book 
and then you try to engage in the conversation. Like when you don't write the app, it's that same kind of impression. And some role plays have very extensive apps and some role plays have like, just basically you need to give your character's name and appearance and that's it. Like, but every role play has some kind of application process, some place where you're supposed to put information about your character, whatever that may be. So whatever that is for that role play, you do need to go ahead and put in your app in whatever timely manner makes sense for that particular community you've joined and yourself, you know? So if you're sitting there just chatting it up in the lobby every day, but then weeks go by and you've still not sent it an app, but you're still chatting a lot, like just know that people are going to be thinking weird things about that. They're going to be like, do they want to role play with us? Why are they here still? This is very yeah. confusing. Like that's the impression that you're going to be giving to everyone else that you're talking to. Or if They're you're like also, yeah, if you're also continuing to sit there and be like, oh, I'm really excited about writing with you and plotting with you and let's like do your, do this thing, but you're not making a character to actually do that thing. Like, even if you're talking about the stuff that you are going to one day write, you, you need to make those ideas into actions. Yeah. Because people will get tired of it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, I mean, Some... best case, best case scenario is they get bored. Right. Worst yeah. case scenario yeah. is they start having negative thoughts about you based on that behavior. Yeah. Right. But even the best case scenario is not good. Like you don't want people bored with you when in a role play hobby. Right. No. That's not good. That's that's the opposite of what we want. Yes. <laughs> uh, some groups do have a time limit for applications. Some, And that'll be in the rules where, OK, after you join this server, you need to have your app in within I've seen some as short as 24 hours, or you will be booted. Others are more generous with a week or two weeks. But check the rules. And then if that the time frame is not in the rules, I mean, you're going to want to get started on that pretty quickly. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. even if they don't have a time frame, like we don't have a time frame, an explicit one, but... Um... You know, eventually, if, if somebody keeps engaging in the in the lobby and not sending in an app, like, it just kind of happens naturally. People stop responding to them. And it's not, nobody enforces it. Nobody says that that's what you're supposed to do or, or, or anything like that. It's just, it's just kind of the natural occurrence because you've never sent in an yes. app. And so people just aren't interested. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're here to write. And if you do not have an app and a character to write with, you are not going to be engaged with eventually. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I've seen people in the cafe have this struggle, um, you know, of somebody that's just constantly lurking in their role play but refuses to actually role play. And it's like, well, what do you do about that? And it's like, well, eventually you have to remove them. Eventually yeah. that's the answer. You know, at some point, people are going to get frustrated with you enough to remove you. Now, I, I think that's super rare. I don't think it happens very often because I think most people take the hint and end up leaving. But, <laughs> but you know, eventually, uh, I do think in most of those cases, mods will remove you. So basically, just send in your app. Don't, don't waste time with it. If you really are truly interested in a space, then get the character in so that you can start engaging in the role play. Yeah. Exactly. And and if you, like I, like I said at the beginning, if you are someone who takes time to write your app, that's not the issue. The mm -hmm. issue is just not making any follow through. Um, and that, that will continue, even if you do eventually make your character, that I have no follow through sort of impression will stick with you. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, people, and people will take that opinion. I mean, unfortunately, because first, first, um, first interactions matter. Um, so that first impressions, that's the word I was looking for, matter. Yep. So, like, if people take this as a, oh, you are you are very slow to follow through um, as something to remember you by when it comes to plotting, they're going to maybe assume that things will be slow to follow through. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because those first impressions are weighted so much more heavily in people's minds. And it's not fair, right? Like, and that's, it's, it's a bummer that that yeah. happens, but that's just, that's just the shortcuts our brains make. So we should be aware of that impression that we're giving people. Yep. Um, the next thing, I think, unless you guys still have some more topics on working on the app. No, I think um, no. I think that's good for now. Um, it might be worth doing a, an episode in the future that actually talks about apps. Have we done that on here? I know I've done that on Spare Room. Have we talked about applications on here? 
No, we remember. should. No, we should. Yeah, we should probably talk oh, about. Oh, we definitely should. We should talk about good. creating. Yeah, we should talk about creating apps and um and filling oh, out apps. Goodness. Yeah. I have spicy takes on that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh boy. I have some too. I have some too that don't fit into uh this particular topic of joining groups today. Yeah. So no, I'm good for right now. Yeah. Um then I oh, Karen Karen reworded this very nicely. Uh, because I have a much spicier opinion on this. <laughs> no. um, we're taking it down. Instead of five peppers, we're gonna give the three pepper version, okay, because that's a little more fair, right? Uh, <laughs> so, um, we talked about this in the sexism um, episode. And because there's a specific group of people who are more likely to do it, but new people do it too. Yep. And that's, uh -huh. you have to understand as a new person coming in, what it looks like to have strong suggestions on how the group that you are joining should change. Um, recognizing that this is a private club it's not a service being provided to you um, to fulfill the expectations and experiences you wish you had. So you can't just come in and demand things to be changed, vague complain, or just straight up complaining about what it is you find annoying or neat or wrong. Uh, doing that won't make you many friends. And it will certainly not you make make you good to, good uh, good terms with the mod team. <laughs> yeah, and probably not the players that have been there for a while too. Um, so so just to to give a little bit more context to what we're trying to say here is, I don't as a new person you can certainly ask questions about stuff that you don't agree with. You can certainly make suggestions about stuff that you don't agree with. But it's very important to understand that. When Landon says this is a private club, what she means is like, this is not a workplace. We all have to work to make money, right? So this isn't a workplace where we don't really have a big choice in going. This isn't um, a place where you're going in to be a patron. They're like, you're not a customer, you know, as in people aren't providing a service for you. It's not like that. It's a private club that is 100% optional to engage in, which means that the social rules are a little bit different. You can't come in and demand certain things or expect certain things because there is no there is no harm in showing you the door, right? Unlike with some of those other situations that I mentioned where it's like getting fired from work is actually very harmful for you. So you should endeavor to have a workplace where it's like appropriate to complain, right? <laughs> but a yes. role play is not like that. A role play is not like that. So you have to understand like if you complain about certain aspects of how the role play is set up, if you offer like multiple suggestions about the way that the role play is set up, if you straight up, you know, say that you don't like this, that, or the other, like by the by, to say I don't like this, that, and then the other. yeah, after after you've been told about why it is this way and it's not changing, and then you continue to complain about it, like oh my god, so like I'm not saying like you can't do those behaviors, you can, but I think they need to be done sparingly because the impression that you're giving the moderators and the players that have been there for a while is that. You've just joined a place and you don't actually like it here. And so they're going to start wondering, like, what the hell are you doing in our club if you don't like, like, A, B, and C about our club? When there's thousands of other clubs just like ours out there that you could go join that do things A, B, and C like what you're describing, right? So that's the impression that you're giving when you when you do things like, I'll, make, I'll have an example from our role play. We have this intricate, like, starter call system that we do. <laughs> <laughs> yes, big oop lunar, exactly. It's very unique. <laughs> yeah, we have a very unique starter call system. And it comes from us being on Tumblr and us wanting to make sure that people aren't like writing into the void and a whole bunch of other stuff. Like it's a whole thing that I'm not gonna explain here, but if people ask, we will like it will explain it to you in inside the roleplay if you join, whatever. So we have this and we definitely get questions on it. People that are confused about it, people that are apprehensive about it, whatever, and they'll ask questions. And we have gotten feedback on that system that's like, well, why can't you just like let people write wherever they want to write whenever they want to do it? And why do you have to have this whole system? Right. And and even after we've answered, sometimes they'll still complain about it. <laughs> and what ends up what that ends up looking like to everybody else that's been using this system for the years and years we've been using it. So we've been on Discord for what, like three years now and we've used this the yeah. whole time. Um, they just look like they don't want to be there. And so it makes it really difficult for those of us that have been in this, these role plays for a long time to engage with them. 
And it's really a bummer because we get very excited when new people join and are, and are interested in the role play, but then we see those complaints and it's like, <laughs> thank you for the howl, thank you for the howl there. Um, we see those complaints and it's like, well, gosh, you even want to role play with us? Do you even do you even care about the story? Does this even interest you? Kind of seems like it doesn't. Um, you know, and there's other examples too, but just but just know that it's a private club. So what that means is that if you are doing these behaviors a lot, what people are going to actually think is like that you don't want to be there. So don't be surprised when people are like, what are you still doing here? And you're like, I was just giving suggestions. It's like, okay, but you've given like five suggestions and it's very similar suggestions every time. Like, we, we don't think you like it here. You know, <laughs> don't be surprised yeah, if people also... think that. Well, there's also a difference between asking a question in the general chat and arguing about the answer you get and going to a mod or the mod team in private and saying like, hey, I've noticed this specific thing. Mm -hmm. um, can we try A, B, or C? Or, hey, I noticed that this is a thing. Can you tell me why this is a thing so I can understand it a little better? Yeah. If There's you come a with a suggestion on how to fix it or are open to understanding, it's a whole different conversation. And it's a difference when it's to the mod team or to the roleplay as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just, I, um, a part of me wonders if people understand how entitled and arrogant they come across, whether they mean to or not, when they assume that they can join a situation that they have very little, because at this point you're not even in the RP we're talking about. We're talking about like before you apply. Um, li very little understanding or history with the RP and sitting there and basically saying, I know how to make this better. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I really hope they don't know. <laughs> I, but, <laughs> I, I want to believe they, they do. don't know. And maybe it's my like goal for people to realize how utterly rude and entitled it is to come in and basically say, like, it's like coming into someone's house and being like, I know how to make this place so much better. Yeah, I'd be like, and why do you put, put your, your cups, cups in why that do you, cupboard? Why did we both yeah. say cups, Kendra? We same brained again. <laughs> yeah, it's exactly like that. It's like when your mother-in-law comes over and rearranges your kitchen cupboards. No, that never happened to me. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and it being like, I'm uh -huh. sorry, I invited you here for lunch not to comment on the color of my walls. Yeah. Like, yes. That's not what this is about. You're You're here for lunch. Um, mm -hmm. If you don't like the color of my walls, go buy your own house and paint your walls the color. Uh, go make yeah. your own RP. But it really, it really does. It has the same energy, and um, and it happens often enough that I am. It is probably my number one pet peeve uh, in an RP situation. I feel like it, at this point, like you almost get triggered by it. <laughs> I do because yeah. you've been running role plays. You've been running role plays for so long. This section was in all caps. Like, when I say that Karen made it nicer, I mean that she, <laughs> she took away all the capital letters and yelling. I had to I mean that I that. told. I mean that I told Landon no. Because the thing is, is like... <laughs> You don't you don't want to run a role play where no one can give suggestions like that is not Absolutely. the goal. There's so much valuable feedback we would lose out on if that's really what we were advocating for. And so I know she doesn't really want to advocate for that. I know what she's talking about is very specific situations where people never stop complaining or giving suggestions or where people are doing it before they've even joined or, where or people they hear refuse... the word no. Yeah, or they yeah, and the they freak no, out. Then, or continue to do it anyway. Like continue yes. to say, like actually I really think the tagging system would be better off this way. And, and like, then they just do it. I told you it's not happening. So why are you what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mhm. Mm which is not the same thing as offering suggestions. Like, no, it's and, not. And I, yeah. and I do think that it hits different when we, get, when we get suggestions from people that aren't even in the role play yet versus somebody mm -hmm. that has been in the role play for like a year or yes, six absolutely. months or whatever. You know, oh, you I... Are, it becomes an entirely different situation if you are already a part of the community. Yes. But when you are heading into the community with a, this is an issue and it needs to change, it has a very super nanny sort of vibe to it. 
Yes. Uh, <laughs> and I and like not, my, my toddler way. screaming, so you need to not. <laughs> it's not the fun super nanny of no. telling people that they're, you know, traumatizing children. And <laughs> now stop that. It's we're not, the bad we're not super nanny. Yeah. Of, I'm right, you're wrong. Why are you doing it this way? Let me fix it. Let me yes. Get better. Yes. 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 And it is. It is that. And. Um, as like I said, as soon as you are a part of the community, as soon as you've seen the dynamics and have an idea of how things work, 100% understand, absolutely open to suggestion. You are then a part of the community, part of the club, and you have a right to voice your opinion. Yes. Um, when you haven't put in the groundwork to be considered a part of this community, that's when it's really tough to hear. And it mm -hmm. happens often. <laughs> super often it's ridiculous <laughs> um yeah is there a way for us to just link back to the sexism in rp oh, mm. episode of that there. time stamp <laughs> oh my god just, like here because it's it's a lot of the same thing it, it is it really is like you just need to understand that it is a club and it's not going to be run to your exact specifications unless you make it yeah but the thing is you can make your own role play at any point it's very easy anyone can do it all you need is a, a, a tiny amount of time and uh and care about your game and or anybody a, can make or one. a lot of commitment it's fun well, yeah <laughs> it is actually a lot of commitment <laughs> well it's not a lot of commitment to make one it's a lot of commitment to keep one running after you've put it up that's true. yes yeah um yeah so that's what i have on that particular topic <laughs> see i was very polite i was very kind there was no yelling i can do this <laughs> poor landon <laughs> very oh, short poor landon <laughs> got a little defensive <laughs> we believe it's okay you. it's okay it's okay it's fine i just need to be let off my leash at some point that's all I don't know about that. We'll see. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> it might not happen in the RP, but it'll probably happen in real life. Oh, have fun. That <laughs> That's different. Oh, don't do that. that. <laughs> no, I won't. It'll be fine. Bad idea. <laughs> it'll be a good worker. No. It'll be fine. Um, <laughs> Poor Landon. He's dealing with so okay. much right now. <laughs> oh, gosh. All right. We're just going to hint to that and not vague. We're just going to vague be like, Landon's just going through it. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So you have done all these things you have joined the rp um you are you, maybe you've applied and you've been accepted and you've come in and now what happens because you're not you're not just in at that point right like you're still in this like trial basis for both not necessarily for the rp since you've already made it past the application process but for you you get the you have the chance to sit there and be like, okay, is this somewhere I actually really want to be? Yeah, you're interviewing the RP now. Yeah. You're, it's the you, other way yes. around now. It really is, because, like, at this point, the RP's, like, sit there and goes, yeah, we'd love to have you. And so now you're like, okay, is this actually the place for me? Mm -hmm. I get to see behind the curtain. I get to see the lobbies. I get to see how people actually interact out of character and in character. What sort of plots are going on? You get to see all of this sort of stuff. So what are some suggestions of what we should do when we've started settling in with a good group or a group that we think is good at this point? Um, yeah, so one thing I definitely want to mention here, I feel like once you get past all of this stuff, um, whether you want to be or not, you're emotionally invested in, in the group yeah. that you've joined. And, and you can't help it. Like, we're just, we're humans, and this is how our brains work, right? So you should be, during those first couple of months in a group, constantly and regularly evaluating if this is the right group for you. And don't get into a sunk cost fallacy. You know, don't get into oh, a sunk gosh. cost fallacy. Because until you've been in a group for a while, a lot of times you don't necessarily know. Like, you don't necessarily know if it's going to work out, if it's right for you, all of these things. And so I think it's very important in those first couple of months while you're still, you know, in that sort of mode to like not let yourself get into a sunk cost fallacy. If you start seeing 
red flags and a lot of stuff that you don't like and you don't like how people are talking to you and you don't like how this rule actually ends up getting applied or da 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 whatever 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 um don't feel like you have to stay just because you've invested a couple of months a couple of months is nothing compared to wasting even more time in a place that you don't actually like so yeah. so you know during these first couple of months the, the role play has interviewed you and now you're interviewing the role play so don't get into a sunk cost fallacy where you feel like you have to stay because you've already invested this that and the other like you haven't yet you haven't yet exactly. you can always take the character that you made and put them somewhere else Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is one of the number one things that I saw in my recent foray is people with characters have said, like, oh my goodness, I really like my character. I really like the plot. But I do not like what is happening with X, Y, or Z. And it's like, well, leave. <laughs> yeah, just recycle okay. that character. Yeah. Just, re just recycle make a them. new version. Make a new version of that character in another space. It's totally fine to do that. And here's the thing, no experienced mod, I think for t first times mods might have a little bit of issue with that, but no experienced mod, no experienced RPer is going to sit there and even judge you or blink an eye at you going. Like, they mm -hmm. might miss you, they they might enjoy that connection, but they're, they'll sit there and not understand. We've all been in those situations where it's like, oh, the, a situation came up. I don't like how the mod team handled it. I don't like certain dynamics that are playing out in the out of character chat. I don't like certain dynamics that are in character. And it's messing with the, the way I view the RP. I'm going to go. There is nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Nothing. Um, it, a good experienced mod shouldn't chase you down or make you feel bad. No. Like the most an experienced mod should ever do is let you know that if they like you anyway, <laughs> let you know that you're welcome back later if you choose. And if it's beyond yeah. that, like, I don't know, beyond that feels pretty invasive to me. And I don't think that most mods are going to do that to you. Oh, it's super invasive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's just really kind of ish to sit there and be like, I left an RP and then had people chasing after me. Like, it just mm -hmm. feels like I I withdrew consent when I left. <laughs> yeah, it, it really feels like you dodged a bullet. Yeah, it can. Yeah, <laughs> when you uh, when you leave this... and then suddenly the mod chases you down, you're like, hmm. Yep, I had bad feelings about them. Guess they were right. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like, uh, and it stinks. The mm -hmm. character that I had in the group where the mod chased me down, I really, 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 really want to explore that type of character, and the plot that went with her. But I had left that group for a very specific reason. And that, that was that. There was no, oh, you shouldn't let this ruin your fun. No, that It was not a discussion at that point. It was, this is not the place for me. I am self-selecting out. I curate my own online experience. And I can tell you right now, this is not the experience I want. Okay, goodbye. And that's it. It's fine. If it's okay to leave a group. It's yeah. totally okay to leave a group. And don't, and like... I mean, okay, so this is, we'll compare, I have a feeling we're going to compare a lot of this section to dating, too. Yep, yep. Um, but there's a wonderful, wonderful comedian um, called Daniel Sloss, and he has a great stand-up comedy about this idea of putting time and effort into a relationship. And you come to a point where you either recognize that all of that time was wasted, or you have the choice to waste the rest of your life. Um, mm -hmm. And that kind of applies to this. It's like, well, if, if all of this was wasted, if you're not happy with the outcome, you continuing to, like, put time and investment into it will not make you happier about the outcome. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, it feels like it feels like it will because it feels like oh I've I, if I quit now then I wasted all that time I put into it but that's just not true that's not no. true all you're doing by staying is wasting more time yeah you either have you have learned lessons you have experience writing you make connections whether you want to make those connections or not um, like there is there is plenty of good just like any relationship that comes out of a past relationship but it is that like. I need to call it and say be done um, because yeah, you don't need to continue to waste your time and energy that you've already been wasting. Mm -hmm. if you, the point if you of this hobby, sorry, no, the no, point of ahead. this hobby 
is to have fun. Yeah. And write cool stories. And if you're not having fun <laughs> someplace, I promise you there is a place where you will have more fun. Mm hmm. The place, and the place exists you. out there for you. I promise you the mods and your writing partners want you to have fun. That's that's why we're all here. And yeah. if and if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Go find some place where you will have fun. And good, you deserve that. Yep. And good mods will understand that that place might not be the place that they built. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, uh, if you see mods chatting and general chat complaining about people leaving, run. Run. Yeah. Oh my God, that's run. a red flag. Run far, run fast. Run far um, and run very fast. Absolutely. No, that is a red flag. <laughs> yeah. But I, I promise you, 99% of the time, what the mod team wants for you is to be having fun. And the mod team knows that that fun is subjective and their group might not be fun for you. And if it's not fun for you, they want you to go to a place where you will have fun mm -hmm. because that's why we're here. Yes. And they want that. I mean, it's a hobby, right? We all recognize that it's a hobby. And if you I hope we recognize that. that. <laughs> well, some people might not. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as long as you are like trying to enjoy it, people will want you to enjoy it. And if, if at any point in time something is hindering that, then go. Go. <laughs> That's yeah. okay. Yeah. No, and... like, go for your own well-being and for your own enjoyment because none of us want to get in a situation where it feels heavy to do this, that you get yourself in such a bad place that you'll never do this again. Like, and that's all things that happen when you stay a place too long. Yes. Uh, or s stay in a situation too long is that when if you start feeling bad about the thing that used to bring you joy. Mm -hmm. And um, I think, you know, sometimes these things can be solved and you don't have to leave. It can be solved with a conversation. It absolutely. can be solved with changing your attitude. Um, things of that nature. But that's that's why a lot of this stuff that we've given today, a lot of this advice that we've given today really hinges on you being very self-aware, right? You have to look at where the problem lies. And sometimes the problem really does lie in the structure of the role play and it's time to leave, you know? But if the problem, yeah. I had a video recently um, where, I, where, we talk, where I talked about this, but if the problem lies with you, you know, you can make changes within yourself and that's always the best thing right because that's what you have the most control over changing or maybe yes. the problem needs to be a conversation between you and a specific person that you're having an issue with right but if the problem is the overall structure of the role play then none of that is going to matter <laughs> so if the problem is that overall structure then yeah don't get into a sunk cost fallacy go ahead and, and you know take care of yourself and go do what you need to do in another role play yep eat out of it yeah <laughs> Yeah, like, um, I know that as mods, we we want our players to be happy and have fun, regardless of that's in our group or not. Yeah, absolutely. I like, also... would I be sad? I mean, maybe I like our players. I love them. They're very great players. But what's more important to me is that they're having fun writing. Yes. One hundred percent. I also wanted to talk about like before like this couple months in that if you are looking for that perfect RFP group um, it's okay to not put all your eggs in one basket it's yeah, okay yes. to sit there and, and be testing out different groups if you found two or three groups that you really liked during your group searching um, it's totally okay I mean it's okay to continue to write in all of these groups but don't feel the need that like hey I applied to this one place I got in and now I only have to be in this RP. Um, in fact, I would sit there and say, don't do that. Yeah, <laughs> don't. Definitely yeah. spread it especially out. Especially if you came, especially if you came from a place of desperate of desperately looking for a home, quote unquote. You're just yes. gonna continue to um, make yourself feel like you like if you leave, then then or sorry, there's so much more pressure on you not leaving because if you do leave, then all of a sudden you won't have a place to go 
Um, mm -hmm. So you need to you need to spread that out a little bit. Yeah, because you, then you go from like a hundred to zero, and it feels like way worse than it actually is. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Super does. Yep, absolutely. And mm -hmm. um, and I'm I'm gonna get on a soapbox here just a little bit because this is and this is something unique to my content and stuff that happens that happens to us. Make sure that you are open once you join the role play that maybe possibly the ad or your expectations were not set correctly. So this happens, this is kind of unique to our role plays. I, I don't, I assume nobody else really has this problem because they don't have a, right, but, <laughs> but this happens to us. We get people in our role plays that watched my content and they enjoyed my content or my personality or things that I said in here. And they get this idea in their head that my role play is the perfect role play. So because we're talking about joining role plays today, I'm here to tell you that is not true. Um, <laughs> so we see sunk cost fallacy in our games a lot because people yes. come via my content. They get all these ideas in their head about how wonderful and beautiful and perfect it is because people have happy ears when they listen to my videos and things like that. Um, and so they start to imagine all these things that are just not true about the way that the role play is going to be. And so they join and then they stay and then they stay and then they stay and they're clearly not a fit. <laughs> not um, happy. <laughs> and this isn't, yeah, and they're clearly not happy, but they're staying because they've got some parasocial feelings about me. And I know I'm not the only one that experiences this. I just experienced it in a very unique way because of, um, because of YouTube. But, uh, but I'm, I'm sure this happens with others, right? In regards to like, they read the ad and they absolutely fell in love with it based on the ad. And so now they feel like they have to stay and just like, don't do that. Like, don't do that. Don't waste more of your time because you've already wasted some of your time. Just don't do it. It's not a good thing for anybody. At the end of the day, we just, we want you to have fun. I want you to have fun. Everybody, you know, I want every role player to have fun. That's why my content exists. So that's what I'm always shooting for. Yeah. Whether that's with I, me or not, I don't care. Yeah, I agree. Um, and I think that like, yeah, that expectations of, of, of realistic expectations. And then once you understand what the group is being able to not continue to like hype it up in your head, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like there is, a, there is a sense of being like, oh, this group is so great, even though it's like, maybe not. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, maybe, um, maybe it is awesome, maybe you know, but awesome. maybe it's yeah. not. Maybe it's, maybe but, yeah. it is, maybe it's not. Like, recognizing that you, you don't have to be dishonest to yourself to convince you to stay, um, to convince yourself to, that you are happy in some place that you're not happy in. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you guys, and, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, do you guys have any other thoughts on this? Because I just, I want to be cognizant of the time, too. We have yeah. a little bit of time, but... Yeah, I have one other thought on, on this as well. So if you're hearing this and you're like, Karen, Landon, and Kendra, I already do that. I leave when I'm unhappy all the time. It's not a problem for me. There's another side of it. If you're unhappy everywhere then maybe the problem is a little bit deeper than that. Maybe it has to do with your expectations. So this is one of those those times where it's like, it's kind of, it, it kind of goes back and forth, whether you should trust your gut or not. I think you should always be interrogating yourself and in your interests and what actually your deal breakers are, because this is an area where your gut can lie to you. Um, so if you find yourself constantly leaving groups, well, that's a whole other problem. And maybe like, your expectations are not proper. So it's tricky. It's tricky, right? Because you have to have a lot of self-awareness to really do this properly. And unfortunately, your gut is going to lie to you sometimes. So that's my last thing I have to say about this. Like, you should be listening to your gut, but don't you don't necessarily always want to trust your gut. Yeah. You got to really be honest with yourself. Yeah. And that's well, hard. Yeah, Always. That's, that's definitely our last our last note here is like you have to know yourself. Um, you have to trust yourself. You have to know yourself. Uh, you have to know what is good for you. Um, and I think that that takes a lot of growth. It takes a lot of kissing frogs, mm -hmm. for lack of a better term. Finding oh, out and frogs. Yeah, hundred frogs. Um, finding out 
what it is you like and what you don't like, not by the hypothetical, but by actually having experience with those sorts of dynamics. Mm -hmm. Do you like rule heavy or do you not like rule heavy or do you like somewhere in between? My suggestion is try all of them because yeah, yeah, you might think that you really like rule light, but it turns out that no, you're actually a sucker for rule heavy and you just never had tried it. Um, Yeah. Which totally happens. So, so being able to like explore that is something that I, I think that anyone who is newer to finding groups RPs, I stress that. Yep. I, I think even if you're experienced in finding groups, I the trends change frequently enough now that when you go group hunting, if whatever your normal RP group of friends is doing if that does not appeal to you if you just would not be happy in that group and you're going group hunting provide something that i don't know is new maybe you'll find like oh hey here was this really cool thing i saw in this other group Mm -hmm. and i had a really fun time doing x y and z that way next group that we make would you guys be open to trying x y and z that way yeah absolutely there's so much value in that yeah sometimes you don't know sometimes you think you like things a certain way but it's only because you've never tried the other way yes so there's value in trying it there's value in trying it (laughs) there absolutely is value in trying it and there's value in like and that's like part of it is trying to figure out what works for you and what doesn't Mm mm-hmm half of the time you're not going to know what doesn't work until you discover it yourself yep in action yep unfortunately because imagining it versus experiencing it are two different different things <laughs> so sometimes it takes really takes trying it yeah man i thought tupper sounded really cool and i was excited to try it out did it work absolutely not <laughs> nope <laughs> but i wouldn't have known if i didn't Try writing with that group. Yep, exactly. And um, yeah, it's it's all about getting to know yourself. Like, and I think that that's something that we as older and experienced writers, uh, it can repeat over and over again. And as a young writer, I know it hates to hear it, but it is like this idea of you will find what it is that is really your red flags or your deal breakers and what isn't what it is that you really like and that will help you be able to also sort through all of this messiness of trying to find a group um because it can be big and overwhelming um and you do make mistakes like not reading the rules or making suggestions that that you don't that you come in and just make suggestions to change everything like you learn these things over time I mean, that's how I learned, like, making suggestions in a brand new role play is, is, is really an awful thing to do, because I thought it, um, after I'd been running them for a while, I was like, I want to go back to joining role plays, and I just couldn't shut the fuck up and let the other role plays be like <laughs> they are, <laughs> you know, and I was like, yeah. oh, oh, man, this isn't for me anymore. <laughs> this sucks. <laughs> Yeah. But I had to learn it the hard way. I had to learn it the hard way by saying, I'm not going to make a role play this time. I'm going to go join some others. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that it also turns out that like you were you you know thinking that you're always right and that your way is right and it turns out that your way is right because well for you end me up that you're happy writing is. your own art piece. <laughs> yeah, for me, yeah. for me um, it is. For other for other people, uh, not so much. But... You know, so, so for other people, it mm-hmm. would not work that way, or that they discover that like they do the same thing where it's like, oh well, we hate how. Karen Terry runs her RP, so we're gonna go run our own RP, and then who knows? Maybe they'll come back, or maybe they won't, or maybe they'll learn and sit there and be like, "Oh no, I understand why Karen did that thing." It's yeah, like, yeah, maybe because <laughs> it's because we didn't want to be working until midnight every night. <laughs> or yeah, it, it could be perfect for them. Oh, absolutely, that too. Copy paste whatever you want in. Go run it your own way. Have fun. Have fun. Yeah, I mean, other and... other people that run role plays, I know, don't feel this way, but I definitely do. You're welcome to steal any of my ideas whenever you want. I don't care if you want to make 
um, another roleplay that's identical to ours with this one thing that you hate changed, you go have fun. That is your prerogative. I do not care. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> you know. what makes the roleplay special is the people that are in it. Yeah. The yep. stories that are being told. Exactly. And whatever people do outside of that, outside of our group, does not affect us. Nope. Because they can't duplicate the emergent storytelling nature. No role, no two roleplays can be the same. Even if they start the same way, they can't be the same. Yes. Yeah. Well, just getting Tumblr flashbacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me too. The oh, receipt. <laughs> the long receipt posts of I posted this group in the tags first. Uh-huh. And, and this, group this other group. And uh. it's like, this is a slice of life. Like, this is not you're not the first group to do this. What are you talking about? Are you sure? Uh -huh. I'm pretty sure that I am the first person to ever think of this plot. Uh, the, first no. do a, you're the first person to do it. You're the first person to do a slice of life role play. Wow. I invented the coffee shop AU. Um, and How honestly, anybody you? else. No, I, I did it. I did it last <laughs> are week. Are you? Um, what? In RP. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> Landon over here arbiter yeah. of all RP originality yes no I steal nothing from anyone I am not affected by media or anything that I see on TV at all I know and you're so not you're a pure you're a purely unique creature <laughs> I've been living under a cupboard I mean stairs god damn it anyway <laughs> so close and yet so close anyway um any last thoughts on these? Anything? Any advice? Any short words? Yeah, just to kind of summarize it, what I think we're really trying to say here is it really is like what Landon said. This episode is about when you're joining groups, how to make that good first impression. So I really, really think that the most important thing that you can do when joining a group is that lurking war. You know, resist that urge to be like, I have joined, I am here, I am the center of attention now, pay attention to me. I think if you can resist that urge, and I know a lot of us as role players have that urge, because like, we're out here performing, like the whole hobby, the whole hobby is like that, you know, <laughs> is what it is. Uh, and so that can be a very, a very typical initial reaction. I think if you can resist that, and you can kind of observe the space that you're in, and, um, and make decisions from there, you can avoid a lot of like those initial social faux pas that people have when they first join groups and you can avoid the whole like open mouth insert foot thing that will happen um at least enough so that you can make friends and have a really fun time role playing absolutely and that's at the end of the day what we're what we're about yeah. um i think also for me I, and i have to say it because like we discussed it's my pet peeve um suggestions are great know the full story before you're doing them and recognize that if the answer is no, pushing isn't going to get you anything else. Unfortunately not. Because again, this isn't a workplace. This isn't, no. uh, this isn't like an establishment where you're a customer. There is no, there, it's a private club, so the social rules of engagement are different. Well, and also like just respecting no as well. <laughs> I think for me personally is a, is a thing that should happen most places. So, uh, doesn't change doesn't change in an RP. Well, maybe. I don't know. I definitely think there's places where, no, you should keep pushing. But an RP is not one of them because it's a private club. And there, no one's coercing you to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't Can let you... yourself coerce yourself to be there. Yeah. <laughs> don't. It, I said this for the past two hours. It's okay to dip. Like, just go. You don't know anybody, anything, but basic human decency yeah and if you're not having fun leave please I don't, yep. we want you to have fun if i'm not having fun somewhere i'm gonna leave yep yep all well, that stuff all that stuff tis a good discussion hope people learned a lot are we Shall ready we for the article i think you're ready for the article yes okay let me save and we will open that article 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 some good news yeah yes, i mean it's, it's at least entertaining <laughs> news i'm not sure if it's good news <laughs> uh, oh gosh <laughs> so this took place in hartford connecticut which is um actually like literally where my grandmother lives 
Um, oh. <laughs> so I thought that that was a little fun too. Um, but that's oh, this is like in Connecticut, that. and there is a Mama Bear. Uh, I'll wait until it's open. Is it open? It is open now. Okay. Okay. So. Oh, you yeah. have to carry them across the road. <laughs> yeah. And it's horrible. And it's adorable. Uh, yeah. So this this happened on March 27th, so just a week ago. Um, and basically, she had to carry these four cubs across the road. So she does it one by one. And it's kind of an adorable video. And I needed everyone to see it. Oh my gosh, and everybody just stops to let her do it. Uh, yeah, one of those cubs is brave. It's following her. Brave just, cub. I'm, brave cub. That's, that's me. Great I'm news. that cub. That's my cub. <laughs> that's so cute. I'm just, I'm, I'm watching the video now. Um, I know y'all are probably delayed, but it's about 25 seconds in. So she just, she picked up one cub, and then one cub followed her across, and another cub's following her across, but the fourth one is still on the wrong side of the road. <laughs> Yeah, I think oh she's going to come. I guess she's going to come back and get it. I don't know. It looks like it's crying now. I just love oh. how the babies walk. It's like they're prancing. and It's, it's like, true. It's they're so like, do, 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 do. I'm that. That's Actually, great. Actually, I lied. I was like, no, I'm the baby that crossed the road first. No, I'm this baby. I'd be crying on the other side of the road. It's like, climbed a utility <laughs> pole and started yeah, crying. No, oh, my God. <laughs> oh my. I'd be like, this is my mom now. <laughs> ah <laughs> uh, and the one the one cub is so super brave the one cub is so super brave it like keeps following her back and forth oh my god no child that's me so funny. that's me that is she, the mom, mom she's like mom, mom, get mom, all of mom, you mom, mom. over here now <laughs> if i just need to be by my mom at all times always no wait that's my child never mind Oh, and both these children think it's a game. <laughs> She's just like, oh. please get across the road. I don't want you guys to die. They don't know. They don't know the cars will hurt them. She's like, which one will follow me like an idiot? <laughs> and that one just wants to play in the road now. This is the danger child. <laughs> but the utility oh my god. <laughs> oh my I'm definitely, I'm definitely the cub that just won't. <laughs> won't cross the road but i'm just like going back and forth like whichever way she goes i'm just going to keep following even though it's very obvious yeah. she wants me on the ones the new side of the road no i'm just going to keep following <laughs> back and forth back and forth oh <laughs> the way they pick up their oh feet so high <laughs> doot, doot, doot. <laughs> they, they prance it's <laughs> wonderful so i'm glad i could provide this little this little bit of good news joy joy yeah. yes this was so happy cute Easter. this is so cute or happy you know zombie jesus day or whatever yeah, Happy or bear day. Uh, uh, what bear do day. they? What do you call it? Um, Oester is the other way to pronounce yeah. it. I don't know how to say that. Um, Ostera? Yeah, Ostera. Ostera. That's what I was looking for. So Happy Easter, Happy Ostera, um, Happy Zombie Jesus Day, whatever, whatever flavor you like. Uh, Happy <laughs> whatever Sunday. Flavor. It's not even Sunday. Happy Saturday. <laughs> yeah. Happy stream day. Woo. Happy stream day. Okay, so um, that's that's accept it. Accept offerings of chocolate. That's my only advice. That's yes. Accept as many offerings of chocolate as you can. <laughs> yes. All right. So that was it. That was our stream um, for Interstage Window Joining Groups. So Kendra, uh, where can everybody find you? Or is there something you would like to promote at the end of the stream today? I just, sorry, I, my windows are open in my car and a bunch of people just walked up. <laughs> you can find me at <gasps> Drowfeels, D-R-O-W-F-E-E-L-S, on Twitter.com. Find hot takes and silly stories. Hey. I'm going to put it in the chat for you. Oh, yay. There we go. Y'all feels. Y'all can go follow her on the Twitters. Yeah, right now it's going to be a lot of promoting a Nancy Drew Let's Play. So um, hey. that's my brand. That's pretty fun. <laughs> oh, you're making, you're making it you for real? You're it? making a Nancy Drew Let's Play no. for real? No, no, no. The, the couple that I've been listening to their oh. old Nancy Drew oh, Let's Plays okay, okay. have put out a new one and I'm just like oh my gosh there's a new one I'm well, so I still happy have hope. I still have hope that you're gonna that you're gonna make one and um and you're also gonna stream Crusader Kings and um and all of that good stuff oh I will I will someday oh, if I ever move. I believe it <laughs> I believe if you it. ever get into the house <laughs> if I ever oh move. yeah oh my god 
All right. Oh. So, um, Landon, where can everybody find you? I have a new thing to promote. Okay. Ooh. All right. So this is an app. <gasps> Uh, yes. And it is for, I have been tarot reading for a while now, and I figured, why not? So, this is just a place that you could go to order and support me, my Etsy, that would be great. If not, you can always DM me also at uh, Landon Main on Instagram and TikTok, and just doing it for funsies, because I really love it and enjoy it and don't know how else to get other people to let me see their cards <laughs> oh so, i love um, this so if you guys are looking for a private tarot reading here you go yeah here you go and i have been told i'm pretty good at it so that's the recommendation we have i okay. hate advertising myself my god <laughs> here do a reading for me and i'll advertise you next time. okay it'll be perfect sounds we good go. we'll do that we'll Beautiful. hype you up <laughs> so, all right guys yeah. so where you can find me there's all of my socials in the chat there. Um, you guys know by now, but we have the Twitch here, which we stream on Saturdays from about noon to about two. And that's Inner Stage Window, our conversation show, um, where we talk about a, a role play or fandom or other nerdy kind of topic while I play a simulation game. I know last week I said that next week was going to be the um, the abuse uh, episode, but it I had gotten my weeks mixed up. So next week for real... <laughs> I think it is yeah it's for real this time I'm actually gonna go because now I'm panicking let me go look at the actual schedule make sure I'm telling people the truth this time I didn't mix up weeks again but I'm pretty sure that's okay. the one for next week it is it is okay <laughs> thank you Landon so yes we're actually gonna talk about that next week um so a real spicy one for you guys so we're gonna talk about abusive behavior online and in role play specifically and oh, um then I gosh. also have our, yeah, <laughs> tune in. <laughs> so I also have Artistic License, which is my Thursday stream, where it's a little bit more variety, a little bit more, you know, just me doing whatever I want. And right now we're playing a lot of Final Fantasy X. That's what we're going to be doing next Thursday, playing some more Final Fantasy X. And then we have Spare Room, which is my scripted show that goes up on YouTube uh, every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Except for these next two Wednesdays, I'm putting it on hiatus. I've just had like some absolutely crazy stuff going on in my life. You can watch the past many episodes of artistic license uh <laughs> to see some of what's going on there uh, i just have not had the mental or physical capacity to make scripted content it actually takes a lot more work for a lot less minutes of content than streaming does crazy that so uh so it's actually going on hiatus for two weeks but i will be back after that with new episodes of spare room just like normal and uh, there's all the regular ways to support me. You guys know how it works. You know, you can subscribe on the Twitch. You can become a patron on Patreon. Uh, I've got, you know, tips, all that. I mean, y'all know how it works. Y'all know how it works. Every content creator does the same stuff. It's the same stuff here, too. And then the social medias I use are Twitter and TikTok. My TikTok is still on hiatus right now. Again, just haven't had a chance to make content for it. But it will be coming back at some point. Um, but it is mostly advertisements for the YouTube. And same thing with Twitter. It's mostly advertisements. But uh, there's other stuff there, too. Hot takes on Twitter and silly stuff on TikTok. So if that interests you, that's my Um, Let's find someone to raid, right? Let's find someone to raid, guys. Would y'all prefer Stardew Valley or Elder Scrolls? Which sounds more interesting. Elder Scrolls. Elder Scrolls? Elder Scrolls. We are going to raid then Brenny Dougals, which is a member of that Wolves Den server. All right, guys. Let's get the raid going. There's the countdown. Thank you guys, guys so much for joining us today. And um, don't forget to make it a great day. Don't forget to be awesome. All right, guys. Bye. Here we go. Here goes the raid. Bye, y'all. See you later. Bye. See you Thursday.